Hey guys, my name is Tristan Duplashane. I am a photographer from Jackson, Mississippi, and I'm showing you today what is in my camera bag. Okay, so I have several different lenses that I use for my photo shoots. Some I use a little bit more than others, but it just kind of varies on what I'm doing. When it comes to wedding photography, I do have a couple lenses that I only use for weddings, and then when it comes to like fashion and portraits, there are a couple other lenses that I favor over those lenses. So I'm going to kind of show you, and I'm going to let you know like some cheaper alternatives. I'm also going to let you know like lighting equipment, and I'm also going to let you know um, like flashes and that kind of thing, and then what I put my files on afterwards. Um, I've had a couple issues with some hard drives, so I'll let you know which ones I prefer. Um, everyone's different. Actually, one of the ones that everyone else likes, I actually don't use anymore. So I'll show you that and let you know how that is. Um, first off, I have the 24 to 70 Canon lens. It is a 2.8. I use this one for fashion shots. Um, I will sometimes use it for weddings if I'm trying to get a certain perspective. But I actually don't use this one um, for weddings as much as I used to. I use it more just for portraits and fashion, more so fashion though, because when it comes to like my clients, such as like engagements, I prefer a 35 millimeter over this lens. Okay, and then my next lens, I actually use this for a really long time, and it originally was one of my all-time favorite lenses until I got a different lens that kind of replaced this one, but it's the 85 1.2. Um, the creaminess that it does on the face is just phenomenal. I love it so much. Um, the only issue that I have with this lens though is if you're in like a tight space, it is not going to work for you because you want to be at a certain distance away from your model or you know whoever you're photographing. I do love this one for bridal portraits as well. Um, I will bring this one out if I have a lot of space, like if I'm outdoors, um, I will use this lens. Um, but I actually just recently got the 50 millimeter 1.2, which is on this um, recording camera, and I use that one actually more than this, just because I have a lot more distance now. Um, and I recently just upgraded to that lens, and I love it so much. Um, speaking of that lens, I actually started out with the cheaper version of that, the uh, 50 millimeter 1.4 lens. Um, it's like a hundred dollars. Um, it's a really good lens. I actually have broken three of them. So if you want something like starting out, if you're clumsy or you know anything like that, there is not much difference between the two. I do like the quality of the 1.2 lens better because of the depth and the bokeh in the background. It is definitely a big difference in my opinion, but if you're just starting out and you need something a little more cost effective, I would definitely say the 1.4. Also, like if I'm traveling, and I'm just vlogging or something, I will use that lens as well instead of bringing my more expensive lens because I don't want to, you know, lose it or, you know, which will be another story in a second for a lens that I have lost, which is the 70 to 200 lens. I actually just bought this one because I misplaced my original. This is the second version. So I ended up upgrading getting the second version instead of the first, which was the original that I had. Um, I absolutely adore this lens. Oh my goodness, you cannot shoot weddings without this lens, especially for certain like churches and venues if you have to be a certain distance away from a couple. Um, this is absolutely phenomenal, especially when you're getting like ring shots. Um, if you're doing video, this is a really good lens as well. It is really heavy. Um, that's the only, <laughs> only fun part about this lens. But aside from that, it is a wonderful lens to have to get those really sharp, zoomed in shots, um, especially for like receptions as well. If you're kind of an antisocial person, I have my moments, like I have my good days and my bad days, but if I'm trying to stay like kind of far away, but I really want to get those zoomed in shots and details of everybody, I can kind of stand away so people aren't looking at me and, you know, turning away or ruining the shot because I'm too close to them. So I end up using this lens a lot. Um, as far as detail shots for rings and um, like the dress, like the beads, um, rhinestones, uh, shoes, I used the 100mm 2.8 lens. I did only invest in this for ring shots. I did not really need it for other um, anything else. I do shoot portraits with this time to time. I do like how it looks. It is very pretty, but I do not use it. I do not use it that often unless I'm just kind of feeling creative and I want to do something a little different I will use this lens however I only when it comes to weddings I only use it for rings and shoes and details 
Um, it is a macro lens. It gets really close. I mean, really great shots. I will throw a photo of a ring in there because it, to show you how great this lens shoots. I love it so much. Um, and then also, I did just upgrade to the Canon Mark IV. I love this camera. Oh my goodness. Um, there is not too much difference from the Mark III. Um, however, the Wi-Fi alone, being able to like hook it up to my phone and take self-portraits, it has just changed my game so much. I love it. <laughs> it's so wonderful. Um, but I do use the Sigma 35mm art lens. It is one of my new favorite lenses. I use it a lot, um, especially for senior portraits. That is definitely one of my go-to lenses. Um, I do use it a lot for engagements as well. I really love crop, like this is just one of my favorite shots for myself. I really love getting details of like arms being wrapped around and kind of cutting off at the eyes. It is just a very intimate portrait. I love doing that or like tilting the lens and kind of going inward, like being really close to the couple. I'll use that lens and it just, it has a depth about it that is just wonderful. It's really good for like lifestyle photography. I really like how that looks. So I do go with that one a lot for those purposes. Um, I also am currently shooting on a T6i. I use that for vlogging for the most part or um, I will use it for self portraits. The reason why I do that is because I can flip the viewfinder and I can see myself so I know what I look like. The only thing is I do prefer my Mark IV because I can hook it up to my camera and I mean to my phone so it's so much easier so just to be able to snap. I have a wireless trigger but for some reason they keep like dying. I mean I keep losing the cords and I'm terrible with wireless triggers. That is one of my mortal enemies and I just give up every time. So I literally have owned like 120 friggin wireless remotes. I don't even know. So, and then one more thing is hard drive. You must have these. These, especially because I shoot in RAW, and I would advise you to shoot in RAW too. Um, just because I'm telling you, you can save so much detail, lighting, um, it's just so much more crisp. You get more detail out of your photo. Um, I will never go back to shooting JPEG. If you want to shoot JPEG, the only thing I would advise is kind of like how um, Jasmine Star, she'll do slideshows and she'll do um, videos and whatnot before um, her clients, you know, before like the wedding day is over, she'll do that. If you're trying to like pop photos really fast for something like that, which is amazing by the way, I don't do it because I'm a one man show right now, but um, if you're doing that, then yeah, shoot in JPEG, but for me, I don't do that. But I do have this WD hard drive, it is like a, I want to say it's like a three terabyte. I always spend the extra money and get the really big terabytes because I go through these so fast. I mean, I have like 10. Um, a lot of people use the Lacy or Lacy, however you pronounce it. Um, I have actually had a couple of those crash on me and I had to send them off. And it is not cheap to get those fixed and get the data off of them. So I do not use those anymore. Um, I do love this one. I've had no issues with it. I own several of them. You can format it for Mac or PC. So I do that usually. But, um, now as far as lighting is concerned, I do have a ring light, which I actually ended up not using because my patio light is just so phenomenal. I love it so much. I literally just got this apartment and I love my window lighting. Like, that is one of the things that sold me is my window lighting. It's just great, especially when I decide to finally get my backdrop stand for my parents' house and set it up in front. I'm going to do some really awesome natural lit portraits with that, so I'm super stoked about that. However, I do own a lot of lights. I broke down and got a brown color um, move set like two or three years ago, and it is wonderful. I have done a, quite a few fashion editorials for different magazines with that set. Um, it is kind of time consuming to set up, but I would not go back. They're extremely expensive, but I would tell you, shoot natural light. If you want to do studio lights, save your money and get really good lights. I started off with the Alien B. They are all destroyed. Um, also, I do notice a drastic difference for me with the Alien Bs compared to the Braun color. There's just something about the color tone that is just way different. And it's just wonderful, like, using that Braun color. I love it so much. I 
I don't even know. I right now only have one light because they're so expensive. So I eventually want to get a second light so I can do a two light setup. And then I usually will trigger off an Alien B just for background light, but I don't do that very often. Now I've kind of gone back to being an all natural light photographer. Um, the only times I do stuff like that is if I want to be creative and do like some fashion portraits or use gel lighting. Um, that's the only times right now that I use studio lights. Um, I do have several backdrops. I actually recently learned, my cats are being really loud. I have several uh, backdrops that I got from a local camera store. However, there are very many cheap alternatives like Amazon and there's other websites that are out there. I can link a couple below if you'd like. Just kind of let me know or I can make a video on that if you want me to. But um, I'm actually about to order quite a few backdrops. I'm looking for like a yellow and an orange and I want to do like, some greens. Because I want to do some shots with like some plants and do some really cool creative colored shoots. Um, it's like I get, like I just said, like with my new window lighting, I really want to do some stuff like that, do some really creative stuff. Um, instead of just doing solid white walls, which I have been doing a lot lately. Um, but right now, I don't have a studio or anything, so the world is my studio. So I typically go out and I find solid color walls, and I'll kind of adjust the light with a reflector. Um, I did get my reflector off of B&H Photo. A lot of things I bought off of B&H. Um, nowadays, I order a lot more stuff off of Amazon, especially if it's something that might be more disposable or something I might ruin really quickly, just because I don't want to spend all that extra money for something I know that's not going to last like forever, or it's not going to be, you know, I don't know, it's not going to be around for like a year afterwards. Um, flashes, I do have a Canon flash. Um, I use it at weddings. I only use it when the sun goes down. That is the only time I use it. Um, sometimes I'll use it re um, at receptions, but I don't even use it at receptions very often because a lot of DJs will have really super cool gel lights and like just flashes and whatnot, and I usually will use that, and they are they turn out really, really well. Um, and then sometimes I can sync my flash to kind of fill in and it looks really neat as well. I love doing like the wide shots uh, with um, like people dancing. I'll kind of get up in the middle of them dancing and I'll just do like really wide shots and they're so cool. Especially when people are really getting into dancing. It's just a really awesome perspective that not everybody gets. So yeah, that is just a little bit of my camera bag. Um, actually, I can't lift this because it is super big and super new and uh, I don't know. But I have a Pelican case. I love my Pelican case. Sorry guys, this was like a little hard for me to film. Like it's really heavy. But this is my Pelican case and like you said, I got a sticker. It's super awesome. I love it so much. Oh my gosh. Okay. So yeah. It is the 1510 case. In case you guys were wondering. I actually got this off of eBay for like really cheap. Um, I want to say it was like a hundred when I bought it. These cases go for like a lot. Um, also in this one, they don't judge me because I was pulling from this case. So it is kind of crazy right this minute. But I have it like this. So it's organized. It's a mess at the moment. And then I separately bought this kind of laptop case. And also this little side zipper which holds my batteries and my cords when I'm traveling. Also, it's weather resistant, and it's um, it's good for like if you're going on an airplane. Um, yeah, it's like good for carry on that kind of thing. So yeah, and there's that. Oh my goodness! Like I don't even know where, how I did this before my Pelican case. Um, I literally just got this like three or four months ago, like while I was still pregnant. So it it was a lifesaver because I was still shooting and having a big belly and carrying my bag because I had a brown color bag that I just threw all my lenses in and it wasn't, no, like now that I think about it, I treated my lenses so poorly before. Now, like, I, I have caps on everything, I have it organized in my Pelican case, I also have a sticker that I've had custom made through um, Vistaprint and it has my logo on it and I stuck it on the Pelican case. Super neat because I also have t-shirts and whatnot, so whenever I go to a photo shoot, I've got my t-shirt with my logo on it, and then I've got my Pelican case with my logo on it. It looks really official, it's nice, so I usually do that, and I'm really satisfied with how that comes out. Um, so yeah, 
I don't really have much more to say about my equipment. If you guys want to know more or you'll have any questions, like drop a comment below and I can let you know. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I have an Instagram page. It's Instagram slash Tristan Duplashain. Um, I do have other behind the scenes videos on my YouTube channel. I'm trying to post a little bit more now that I'm in my apartment because I have my little office space that I've been working on and I would like to be cranking out some more videos and get to actually know people and kind of connect. I am looking to work with other models around the U.S. Um, I currently am in Mississippi, but I do travel a lot and I do um, try to meet with models whenever I go on vacation out of state. Um, so that's just kind of something I like to do. So check me out, comment. I would love to become friends with you and I will see you in my next video.